What is going on everybody? So hope everybody's having a good Saturday right here. If you guys are also watching the Patriots Club series, that's what I was doing earlier. Uh, this game between Shut It Down and T. Davis probably ended about 20 minutes ago. I wasn't even planning on making a video today, but I saw some stuff that I thought would be really cool to talk about. And what that topic is, is what separates great players from just good players. So right here, this sequence of plays, shut it down on offense, tied ball game, 10-10, at the 50, second and six, gun bunch flipped, and you're going to see he's going to run corner strike. And so when I think gun, blunt, gun bunch, the first two people I think of are Skimbo and Joke. So, and, and corner strike is an integral part of both of their game plans. And your first read on corner strike, whether... You want to read the left side of the field or the right side of the field should always be the flat route. And that's something if you watch Skimbo play 100 times out of 100, if the flat is open, whether it's his tight end on the flat route or his running back out the backfield, he will hit them every single time. If there is not a hard flat defender out there or if there is not a man-to-man -man defender guarding the flat route, he will hit it unless obviously extenuating circumstances like third and 20 where you don't want to throw a flat route. But any normal down and distance, he will hit the flat route every single time. And it all comes down to consistency and discipline. And that's really what makes a great Madden player great is having the discipline to know your setups, know your reads, stick to them, not try to get fancy, not try to get it all in one play, know and trust in your game plan and methodically move the ball down the field knowing that by going through your progressions it's going to give you the best chance to move down the field and have a successful offensive drive so right here what you're going to see from shut down motion is out the corner out if we just pause the video right here look on the left side of the field the left side of the field first off well both flat routes are open so whether he's reading the left side or the right side he should have already either hit the table route out the backfield or the flat route to his tight end. One of those two, they don't have a defender within 10 yards of either of them. So the, the read should have already been made. The ball should already be out of his hands. Easy first down, whichever way you want to look. If he was reading the left side of the field, which I would think he is since he's, well, Michael Vick, lefty, and he's rolling to the left, which generally you're reading whatever side you're rolling to. T. Davis literally does not have a defender on the left side of the field. The only defender is this guy, this cornerback, in a deep third, it looks like. So he doesn't even have a hard flat, a cloud flat, a soft squat, a seam flat, a curl flat, a man-to-man -man defender. There's literally nobody on the left side of the field. So whatever route he was reading, whether it should have been the flat, or even if he was tunneled on the corner, they're both naked wide open, should have been an easy first down, with the potential to get a lot more yards if you throw it to the tight end, turn up field, you get a block from your X receiver on that cornerback. I mean, you, you're looking at a huge, probably 20, 25, 30 yard gain right here, puts you easily in field goal range. But that's three wide open receivers that you just hit one of them, keep the drive alive, get the first down, keep the ball moving. You're in a tied ball game. These are the types of plays that you have to make. And these are the types of plays that guys like Skimbo and Joke will make every single time because of their consistency and their discipline and trusting in their reads. And so you're going to see right here that uh, whenever you roll the footage, shut it down, scrambling around, gets very, uh, you know, happy feet in the pocket, ends up rolling out and throws the ball away. So he throws the ball away on a play where he's got three receivers wide open uh, for an easy first down. And so then he comes back on third and six and actually ends up running the same play, corner strike, once again. And you're going to see this time T. Davis actually has defenders out there. But once again, it's a case of T. Davis has two cloud flats. So right here, cloud flat. Right here, cloud flat. And this is another scenario if you watch Skimbo or Joke. If there is a cloud flat out there, they will hit the tight end or the running back literally every single time. And this is another scenario. So third and six, hit the running back, hit the tight end, get up field. You break a tackle, you fall forward. You know, T. Davis clicks on, tries to make a play, misses a tackle, whatever it may be. Give yourself a chance to get the first down. Even if T. Davis makes the tackle, it's probably a fourth and one, fourth and two at worst. You're probably getting the first down more than 50% of the time. Let yourself make a play right here. He misses both of them once again. Scrambling around, scrambling around. It might be Mike Vick syndrome. You might you might be so used to playing with Mike Vick and making plays with him that 
you know, just scrambling has become an instinct now, but, you know, he's rolling out, he's running straight at his tight end in the flat, who's wide open, he could probably throw it to him right now still and, and get upfield with the rat catch and get the first down, but rolling, 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 ends up getting run down by number 43 there for a gain of two, and so that sets him up in a fourth and four, and what ends up happening on, on fourth and four here, snap of the ball, once again, scrambling around, scrambling around, can't find anybody, and T. Davis comes up and makes a user sack. For a turnover, T. Davis actually ends up getting the ball back, driving down the field, kicking a field goal to go up 13-10, and and T. Davis ends up winning the game 13-10. So that, that series of two plays was literally the difference in this game between, you know, shut it down, keeping a drive alive, and probably getting at least in the field goal range, especially off that second down play, and getting points on the board and taking the lead, to now, T. Davis has the ball in the 50, drives down, kicks a field goal, and ends up winning the game by three. So it's a sequence of plays like that that can affect the game so largely, especially when you're playing at a high level. And then I think that really highlights just the consistency and discipline you need to be a great player, to make the right read every time, to know your progressions. Not, not necessarily make the right read every time, but whenever your first read or your second read is literally wide open, you should make that read 100 times out of 100. You know, not necessarily if your first read and second read are, are you know, covered and then the pocket's collapsing and you try to force something in. Okay, yeah, everybody does that. Every single Madden player will make a read like that every now and then. But if you're a great Madden player, if you're a professional Madden player and your first read is wide open, you should be hitting that receiver every single play. So... I just thought that little sequence really highlighted kind of the difference between great players and good players. Um, not to come down on shut it down or anything, great job making it to the live event. I know he was at a live event last year as well. I think he actually won the Patriots Club Series last year. So, you know, obviously he's a good player, just missed a couple reads right there that really could have turned around uh, this event for him this year. Unfortunately, got knocked out by T. Davis. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely comment. Let me know what you guys thought. And until next time, guys, take it easy.